So first of all, I'd like to thank the organizer for the opportunity of today and also CCB for providing the travel fellowship. Uh, so our story began uh, uh, from clinics. Patients uh, visit the doctor and doctors, uh, based on the symptoms, uh, try to find out what's the problem and uh, uh, sometimes uh, they take a blood test and go for uh, next generation sequencing to find out what's the reason of a special disease or phenotypes. And unfortunately, sometimes it's so rare and they don't know what's causing the disease. So. Uh, let me uh, start with an example. Uh, it was happened almost five years ago. A uh, private in investigator from uh, Belgium, one of our colleagues, uh, seeing a patient with this phenotype, and they uh, did the uh, sequencing and they found out a six de novo mutation, but they don't have any idea which one of these mutations causing the, uh, these phenotypes. And uh, uh, after a while, he met one of his clicks uh, from Netherlands, and they start to, uh, talking about their cases and uh, sharing their cases. And uh, uh, of course, they sharing beer. And they suddenly noticed that they were working on the same case. Uh, they did also the sequencing, and they found seven de novo mutations. Of course, they don't have any idea which one of those seven uh, caused this phenotype as well. And then after they match these two uh, samples together, they realize that uh, which one of these mutations caused these phenotypes. So it means that for our research, we really, we really need data. And thanks to uh, uh, decrease on the price of next generation sequencing, so far we have something around 1,000 centers doing the uh, next generation sequencing and produce huge amount of data day and by day. But uh, it's really great opportunity, but it makes our work more hard to find the samples that we need for our research. Uh, we have limited option to find uh, the samples, either to sequencing more patients with the same phenotypes, or start to reading literatures and find uh, uh, who working on the same data as we need. And the, the last one is drinking beer with our colleagues in events. So as you uh, already noticed that discovering the data is not easy. Uh, apply for having access to data is so con time consuming and dealing with bulk data, data set is a nightmare. So uh, uh, the solution for this is data sharing, and because of lots of concern behind the word data sharing itself, uh, for the start, we prefer to use word result sharing. Is there anyone in this room uh, not share his daily life on one of these social network? Oh, nice. And even if you're not sharing it, you, as a researcher, definitely share your research as a scientific journal. Uh, and this is, what, uh, this is the reason that because we all familiar with sharing, but the most important thing here is that what we're sharing, when we're sharing it, and of course we're sharing it with who. So far, uh, there's not that much genomics data share. There are many movement on this field, but the reason behind it is that there are several limitations and uh, stops in front of us. The big one and main concern is that the patient and individuals can be identified through their genome. And uh, the other one is that the metadata we attach to our data, there is no minimum standard for, for this. Yes, of course, in our, our centers and every center, they have a standard for it. And uh, uh, there is no guarantee that if we want to transfer our data to another center, someone else, somewhere else, know it and uh, could translate it to what they have there. And the last but not least limitation is uh, research uh, behavior itself. Because uh, till we not find anything in our data, we not share it and we not publish it. Uh, even if we couldn't find or the paper is rejected, the data is stayed there. Who knows, maybe that data useful for someone else somewhere else. As I explained before, that the, we prefer the uh, start with the result sharing. Uh, and the reason is that for a start or research, we don't always need to have access to entire the data. We can start with, with some simple question. What's the frequency of certain mutation among the population? To do so, we define a goal for ourselves. We, we, we try to create a structure to organize data with respect to the uh, safe uh, privacy of the individuals in a safe environment 
and uh, we should guarantee that that data uh, is always accessible and easy to use for the user. So as a result, we developed tools and name it NG Logistics. It's a web application tool. A uh, user with a valid affiliation can come to, the, uh, to our website, register, and after the, their user is activated and approved, they are able to submit queries. So uh, when they, they submit the queries, uh, uh, it's dispatched to every center where they're, they're, uh, one of our modules installed in centers. Uh, it's simply scheduling the job and uh, take care of running the request and returning the result back to the main system. As soon as the result back to the main system, we apply uh, the access control list and return the result back to the user. Uh, so if I want to uh, start with explaining how our data access model working, I have to come back to clinic again. When the patients come to the clinic, based on their, their, their uh, issues, they, they divide into different uh, doctor and clinician. Uh, so maybe the clinician asks for a sequencing, and the data after it's generated by the machine is stored separately again on, on the cluster and servers. So an only trusted user for that PI uh, have direct access to that data. Sometimes they might be collaboration, but it's on that side. We take this model and apply it to our structure. Uh, so we create an object, we name it data, uh, data set. We add sample to that data set. Those samples are belonging to one PI, and then the PI decided how many data sets they want to have and uh, who can have access, either a person or a group of users. Uh, we have uh, several layers of, of users. The system admin is control the whole activity of the system. Then the local admin who are responsible for take care of the managing the samples and users uh, on their local uh, servers and uh, local uh, centers, and then the PI and users. So we develop a rich interface uh, tools to make uh, 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 work of every local admins much, much easier and faster, so they don't need to worry a, a lot to take care of everything. And uh, so, uh, as I explained before, data is stored in a data set. Uh, so every data set contains some samples. Uh, data sets are divided in two, two groups. One of them are the public data sets and the other one is the private. Public means that every user can have access to those samples and can see the detailed information related to those samples. And the private one are the ones that only trusted users have access to them. Uh, we have so far again two two different kinds of uh, requests. One of them is a single point query request. It just simply ask for the uh, mutation occur in single positions, and the other one area query ask for, for, for a gene or, or uh, area of interest of the user. As soon as the requests are submitted to the system, uh, the query manager on the site pick up the request, start to prepare the uh, request. And we, we targeting a BAM file directly and call the variance with GATK. When the results get ready, we return them back to the main system. There will be an interface on the system that users can track their queries and see the status of uh, every center. Uh, they running, they scheduling, or, or they they retaining the result back, or they have done. So as soon as the first center's result re ready and return back to the main system, users are able to see the result. They don't need to wait for all the centers return the result back. Uh, our, our, our experience that shows that, for example, for, for 1,000 samples, uh, it only takes something around two minutes or three minutes at max to all the results re get ready and return back. So I start to explain the result by area query. As I said before, every user have access to a data set. If the user activate that data set, they can, he can see the detailed information about those samples. Even if he don't have access to any data set, still he can see information related to those possible mutations occurring on that area with some frequency about the genotypes uh, of that uh, SNP. Here, users are able to filter the data based on the occurrence on dbSNP and 1000 genome and link to some, some public databases. Uh, there is also a uh, possibility that uh, if, for example, I'm interested in uh, launching a single point query, I can launch it through this interface as well. So again, uh, for single point queries, if I activate a data set, I can see the detailed information r related to only to those samples that I have access to them. And if an, even if, again, I don't have access to anything, I can see some statistic and see the frequency of 
uh, that mutation among the whole population. We have a data set also, it's, uh, it's a 99 individuals that we use it as a control data set that you can compare with, with, with that data set and some measurement about the quality of the sequencing at that point and you can filter, apply some filter on it to be sure that the quality is okay. Uh, so, but the most important view here is this view. Through this interface, you can see uh, for the mutation that you need uh, to know more about it, who has it at which center and uh, uh, it's located where. So through our interface, you can ask for having access to that sample to the, send the request to the owner of data. As soon as you submit the request to the owner of data, he will receive an email with the detailed information of your request, and he can accept your request and give you more permission to the sample, or reject it, or tell you that this sample, for example, is not related to your research. For example, the phenotype is something else than you need. So far, uh, seven centers join our network. Uh, they are all from uh, Belgium, uh, and uh, we have uh, around 4,000 samples, mostly exome in our system. Uh, we have 131 users, uh, which on a regular basis submit uh, requests to our uh, system and work with system, write us some feedback and uh, give us some suggestion to add more functionality to the system. And to wrap up my talk, I would like to uh, say that the whole is greater than some of its parts, as Aristotle says. If you have a data set that you are able to share it with us, please join our network. Even if you don't have any data set to share, just uh, register on the system, try to look into the data, uh, submit requests, send us a feedback. Your feedback are so valuable to us. And uh, at the end, I would like to thank all the people who helped me on this project, especially my promoter, Professor Eve Moreau, and uh, thank you very much, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you for the nice talk. Any question? Please, I invite you for the question to uh, go through the alley and uh, the microphone. Thank you. Could you comment on uh, how much work goes into attaching metadata to those sequences so you can structure your queries? Uh, so, so, uh, so far, uh, we only have some metadata, not, not full phenotypes of the patient. We only uh, keep the record of uh, which references, the, the, the sex, and, and also, uh, uh, in general, why they sequence that patient. Not that much. As I said, we are still working on it to find a, st a standard for attaching the metadata. Definitely, we are for, for uh, uh, phenotypes. We're going for HPO terms but it's a lot of work to do, and also we have to take care of applying the uh, um, security measurement to that, not make it identifiable at the end. Thank you. More question? So may I have one here too? Yeah, okay. Um, well, just wondering, the so currently what is the, the, the infrastructure, the architecture, so what is where? what a size of server you currently have, and how do you think that will scale in the future, depending on the demand of the... So uh, that's the thing. Uh, um, we not save anything in our server. It's only the result saved there for 20 days. There are two reasons behind it. Uh, the first one is that I, after 20 days when we delete the result, the indexing of the system becomes, becomes much faster and better. And the other reason behind it so, is that uh, we're thinking that within 20 days, more sample will add to the system that change the frequency of the mutation. So our, our server never need uh, a high performance computing. But of course, in local servers, they definitely have their own cluster and servers that they can uh, serve their, their uh, request there. Thank you. Any more questions? So let's thanks again, the speaker. Thank you very much.